uh, I will going to present this morning um, a work in progress of my PhD degree. It's um, a subjective quality assessment of stereo 360 video. So this, the subject um, is uh, a very interesting, and and I, I choose this because it's um, actually an evolution of my previous work on my uh, that I just evaluated stereo video, right? Normal stereo video. And, and this time I, I changed to 360 video. Well, uh, the programming will be consisted by a definition, motivation, a problems in my current work. First, 360 video definition. Well, there are another names to 360 video, like omnidirectional video, immersive video, spherical video, but there are videos where multiple multiple directions are recorded at the same time using a non-directional camera or a collection of cameras. Here you see an equirectangular projection of a video. This is actually uh, projected on a sphere and you can see uh, a lot of, of, of viewports actually. But uh, I, but here I, I segmented that video on six on six uh, parts and up forward let's where my mouse here one from my mouse just disappear oh it's, it's here let's um sorry forget on your option laser point all right that is up forward right left backward and down views uh, so uh, a spherical video, uh, 360 video, is actually uh, a way that you can do uh, immersive content uh, using, of course, a head-mounted display. I will uh, will uh, will be very fast introduction to creation of 360 video, just for for the ones that did not know. But um, you need a special rig of multiple cameras or a dedicated camera that contain multiple lengths. Just like this device, this is uh, a six camera array. And this is well, one camera that rotates. They create a, not a video, but actually a photo, a 360 photo. Uh, so this is some examples of creating 360 video. Uh, they are th these cameras. They film together, overlapping angles, so you can, uh, after uh, using a stitchling approach, you can combine together this video into a spherical piece of video, and you have to do a lot of uh, adjustments after that, color and contrast exposure for example need to be calibrated because uh it's obvious that the the light capture on these lens are not the same and if you did not use this color and contrast and contrast uh equalization you get some views with different uh luminations for example uh, this uh, color and contrast calibration can be, can be done at the camera itself or after that on a studio using editing software. And uh, like I showed in the beginning, uh, 360 video is, format, is formatted using an uh, equirectangular projection. And it can be a monoscopic, just one image on both eyes, or stereoscopic. Some people actually uh, didn't know this because they always think that uh, 360 video is stereoscopic. Actually, most of videos on the internet are actually monoscopic videos, uh, mainly the the live ones. Using live footage, most is a monoscopic video. So it is accurate rectangular project. And what it is? This is one. Actually, I will only focus 
on the on the technology that I use on the on this experiment. It's one of the ways that you uh, can represent a 360 video. There's another one. It's the cube map, but the equirectangular projection or ERP. It's just like a geographical projection. We we can see here the the Earth, the I don't moon map. Né? I don't know if this is uh, this is the correct in, in English. Né? But uh, what is this like rectangular projection? These projections is maps meridians to vertical straight lines of constant spacing and circles. Uh, of latitude to horizontal straight lines of constant spacing. This is because one of uh, the reasons that these projections, uh, it's also called lat long projection, latitude longitude projection. Uh, on the bottom of the, and on the bottom and on the top of the of this projection, the image uh, are a little deformed. But on the maybe on the Ecuador line, on the on the main horizontal line, it's almost without distortion. But if this is only one projection of the, a monoscopic projection, if you want to do a stereoscopic projection of a 360 video, you need to actually need actually a lot of cams, actually uh, two times more cameras. Uh, so stereoscopic projection can be used on a lot of uh, devices, of a lot of media. You can use on a simple 3D video or stereoscopic video using a, a, a glasses, a 3D glasses, right? Or you can use on a head-mounted head display. So stereoscopic projection, what it is, is as a technique for creating the illusion of depth in the image by means of stereopsis for binocular vision. So uh, this technology mimics what our eyes fuse in the brain. This is the stereopsis. So uh, most of the stereoscopy uh, methods consist of creating two images separately, and one for left eye and one for the right eye. So how this can be done? Uh, well, so what I showed you guys, it's uh, that 360 video has a lot of possible distortions, artifacts, and what I need to, to address is how to measure this impact of each artifact on the immersion on the quality of experience well uh, we are we are not uh, only ev uh, evaluating here evaluating here the image quality it's not only image quality we actually want to evaluate the overall quality of experience of a user and this quality of experience they, they take into account a lot of uh, factors. And I showed to you guys a, a lot of uh, different distortions here that affects the overall quality of experience. Ooh. And the, the excessive and positive parallax, for example, create a, a much strong 3D effect, but they call uh, they, they they call no they 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 cause to a lot of discomfort and this discomfort they affect the quality of the experience so it's not about just image quality here or stereoscopic deep effect you need to balance things so. What I am proposing to do is create a stereo 360 video database. And after that, conduct a, a crowdsource experiment, create models and, and maybe a metric, right? And, uh, and this is the object of my current work. 
So on the first step, create a stereo uh, 360 database. So uh, the first thing is to to plan what you do, what you're gonna create on this uh, 360 database. First, you have to to plan your your HRC, your hypothetical reference circuits, your degradations. On this experiment, I planned about nine. You have a 2T view. This means uh, a video without the stereoscopic uh, effect. You have uh, three different zero parallax configuration, near, middle, and far, so that the, the viewing full screen that I showed you before, that zero parallax, they move along the full screen. We have a, a keystone effect, just like I showed you guys, the deep plane curvature. And we have three temporal distortion. First is the temporal sync mismatch. This happened when you have one view starting after the another. The frames are not synced with each other. We have low frame back, low frame height playback. All the videos, they are 24. FPS frame per second, and the low frame rate playback cut this by half. And the movement lag, the movement lag is when you're moving your head, but the image are not falling. So they I artificially, I artificially in, in, insert some legs on this representation. It's just, just like some jitter. It's from time to time, it's like um, uh, two to three seconds, I in insert this leg. So it's just like a freeze, it's just like you're moving your head, but the, the image just freezes for a, a millisecond, but can be uh, noticed. Content creation. After you planning your HRC, after I plan it, uh, I created my content. So I, I use um, the Maya. It's a 3D editing tool, 3D content editing and rendering. And I added these lat long cameras. They are cameras that produce equirectangular images. So I use the, the GPDS server to handle this image. It takes one day to five days. It depends on the on the scene. Some scene had a lot of uh, physical simulations, light simulations, and the scenes take more more time. It's five day pay per HRC per view, uh, per left view. No, no, this is the the the, the total view. So five days to run one, for example, one. Uh, still near five days so one scenes need to be done one two three four five so it just take 25 days to finish one scene on the server running uh, with 100 percent of processors 100 percent it's a it's a very uh, a, a very heavy computational work it's because i i want to create a very, uh, let's say, commercial version of this renderings. I use 8K with AGR, 10 bits per pixel per view. So each view have 8K resolution here. After you create this, you do a tone map because when we are uh, create an AGR image, you need to do a tone map algorithm. And this tone map algorithm, you can do a simple linear algorithm or a more complex algorithm. I actually forget about the name of the algorithm that I use, but it's a very complex one that resulted in a very good image, on a very good final image here. Uh, it's because the, there are fewer, few, uh, 
devices with ADR capabilities. So you need to turn mapping to actually use this on the normal displays and the image will not be washed out or too dark or too bright. After you tone map your image, you need to encode. On this encode process, I, I cut the resolution by half. And you guys ask, may ask me, why you create the HK HDR output if you are using a 4K encoding? That's because actually I'm doing this for future work. And today, it's very heavily we, that we have a, a device that can play 8K per view. It's not very common, but on the future, you this will become a normal, uh, and we can actually use the, the the true power of the of the rendering images. But after you encode a 4K per view, it's a 6K for total. All right, it's it will not be a true 8K. Of course, it's not. It's 4K per view. I don't use the fast start flag on the H.264 codec because I don't want this um, this video to be streamed. I just want to be downloaded to the head-mounted display and play it after the download. 